guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're teaching you guys how to grow on YouTube in 2020. This is literally my second part filming this. I made a TikTok video. We're talking about YouTube and then we're gonna do Instagram. So yeah, I'm literally making this video by the way in my head. So I hope I can say something valuable and hopefully I don't sound too stupid. So the first thing I've noticed about YouTube is even if you have TikTok, Instagram, I feel like YouTube is still that platform that's like the most respected. Like yes, you can have followers, but if you have subscribers, you immediately become like an idol and a queen. You are a legend. I feel like there's more merit in YouTube. Like you could just be someone posting videos on TikTok, but if you're a YouTuber, you have a lot more tangible merit. And I feel like that should speak for itself. Maybe there's something about YouTube that we don't really know. And as the algorithm keeps changing and we have to keep up as marketers or creators, this video is gonna explain what you need to know to simplify the YouTube algorithm. Let's get started with the first thing you gotta know, which is click-through rate. I have a little pun for you guys before we dive in. Dad, if you were a landing page, I'd give you a high click-through rate. Get it? No? Well, and that's essentially, the higher to click the rate, the more ideal and enticing you are to a viewer. So your goal as a creator is to make sure that your thumbnails are eye-catching. I am telling you, so many people don't understand the value of a thumbnail. When you're scrolling on YouTube, training pages, or you're at the home, you're gonna see a title and a thumbnail. Before you even watch the video, you're gonna click on the thumbnail first. So that's why it's super, super important to have a very eye-catching thumbnail. Now listen here, right? Maybe you're like, hey Jade, I still don't know how the algorithm works. Like how does it like know what to push? Well, Sally, it's it's gonna be okay. Listen here. So say your video has to do with something about hair tutorial. YouTube's gonna share this video and push it on people's home pages and feeds to see if people are interested in hair videos. Now what's super important is YouTube's gonna push it to 100 or 200 people, right? But in order for YouTube to keep suggesting it to thousands and millions of people, you have to have a really good click-through rate, right? Because if YouTube sees that your click-through rate is like really low, they're not gonna keep pushing it. You have to prove to them that in the first 100 people, say 50 people click on it, right? So that's why it's super important to have really beautiful thumbnails, which I'll go into in a little bit, but that's the importance of the click-through rate. Now, if you're asking what's a healthy CTR, which is click-through rate, I would say it's around 15 to 20%. Now, I'll be honest, it's actually really freaking difficult. Most of my videos on my channel have around like a 5% click-through rate. It's not easy. The reason why it's actually really hard is because YouTube doesn't know who to suggest it to in the beginning. So for example, say you're having a haircut video, YouTube, the algorithm is not smart enough to push it to like hairstylists. Maybe they accidentally push it to gamers. And because of that, gamers like don't want to click on the video. So sometimes it's not your fault, but sometimes it could be your fault. So one of the most important ways you can look at your thumbnail to see if there's a clear message coming across. If your thumbnail doesn't have clear text, if you can't see a face, YouTube is not smart enough to know where to push it. So make sure you guys use keywords and your visuals are really on point. So for example, here's a thumbnail that maybe wouldn't do so well because it's not really easy to read and there's just too much going on. However, this thumbnail has my face really clear and a few words to tell YouTube to push it to people that maybe like hair videos, right? Because I have a picture of my hair before and after. So it's super important to realize that it has to have a clear, concise message and your face needs to be in it. It's kind of weird, but I find that YouTube doesn't like it when there's more than two faces. Like I had a video with five people in it and literally the click-through rate plummeted to 5%, which is actually really bad when you think about it. The minute I changed to two or one face, it really helped. So just be very clear in your message and the text is super important. I just quickly have to add, the reason why I've learned so much about thumbnails has to be from my friend Ryan. Ryan's a YouTuber. He has 2 million subscribers, but he's just also a such a good friend of mine that like I love him to death. He's super smart and strategic with thumbnails. I've literally seen him edit thumbnails for hours just for a single image. So you know he's just super, super detail oriented and he knows what he's doing. Added some shadow Whoa. and this is the real photo. So I cut him out of here Whoa. and made him look like he was reaching in the car. I think a recent video of his hit like 7 million views in two weeks, which is insane. But I actually am happy to say that Ryan is speaking at my event called The Green Room. The Green Room is a conference in Los Angeles. This event literally means the world to me. As you can see, like Ryan has helped me. Also, all my friends who are speaking has helped each other. And like, I really wanted to recreate this like support circle in this event. So if you guys want to ask Ryan about any questions about thumbnails, he will be speaking. If you guys want to grab a in-person ticket for the event, it's 30% off, but we also have virtual tickets. So if you can't come to LA, don't worry, grab your tickets, but it's ending in two weeks. So go grab it if you haven't already. Um, and I can't wait to meet you guys. Okay, let's go back in today's video. Now, once you figure out a really, really eye-catching thumbnail and really good title, you need to make the video watchable and hopefully have people stay as long as possible. So then we're coming into what we call watch time. I'd say click-through rate is a little bit more important than watch time because if people don't click on your video, then they're not gonna watch it. But watch time is just as crucial 
social, right? Similar to what I said before, if YouTube sees that people are staying for a long amount of time, they're most likely gonna push it to more and more people. A really healthy watch time is around 40 to 50%. Now, I'll be honest, again, it is really hard to do that too. You have to be a really good storyteller. You have to keep people engaged. If you guys would like to see a whole video about storytelling and creating an engaging video, let me know and I can break it down in the future. But my main summary to make really high watch time content is a really good beginning, middle, and end. You wanna basically make sure that throughout the video, people know why they need to stay to the very end. Is there a really big problem you're solving? Are you making the viewer feel like they're part of the story, right? So whether you make tutorials, vlogs, make sure you ask yourself like, why are people staying to the very, very end? And once you understand that, then you can create content and put footage that makes sure that it supports that story. So I'll give you guys an example. This video right here has a watch time of 25%. And the reason why it was so bad and not a really healthy watch time was because I was literally talking for the first three minutes about something completely irrelevant. People clicked off, they didn't give a shit. However, this video that has a watch time around 45% was straight to the point, I dove right in and I made sure I gave the audience value as soon as possible. So honestly, if you can learn anything about watch time, just shut the fuck up, get straight to the point, and then you might have a better chance of having a higher beginning and end watch time. So now you're probably like, okay, Jade, it seems like a lot of data, a lot of analytics. How do I get started as a beginning YouTuber? Now, if we're starting with zero views and zero subscribers, I'm telling you, none of this information will be actually helpful because you need to fail and try a lot. I personally have made over, I would say like 400 to 500 videos in my, I guess, career. And I definitely had really shit videos. Like my first 100 videos were super, super bad. So if I can give any recommendation and my main takeaway to anyone who maybe is still confused, seriously, just make a lot of videos, make 100 videos that are mediocre, not the best, and then reflect and look at the data and see what you can take from it. I think too many people want to optimize too early. And I'll be honest, this video is actually not helpful at all if you don't even have a video. So my message to you guys is to go out there, make a YouTube video. It's okay if it sucks. It's okay if you don't have a good watch time. You can always go back and reiterate. And I believe all success is learning from your mistakes. So don't be afraid to fall on your face a few times and learn from that. So with that being said, I want to shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, all you got to do is just comment below and I will pick one of you guys to be shown in the next video because I have another third part, which is how to grow on Instagram. I feel like I'm on this like caffeine high. So make sure you guys watch part three if you guys are interested. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.